I was invited here to be a representative of the Jewish community. I am Jewish, but I do not for one moment hold myself out as a representative of the Jewish community, which, like other communities, is a, a spectrum. There are those who, on one end, are perhaps indeed are racist. There are those who don't give a damn. There are those who are liberal for all of its good and lesser meanings. And there are those who are real progressives who have, through the years, been involved in the things that most of us in this room, I believe, would admire. Let me acknowledge a few of them. I feel safe in doing it because they're all gone now. But they were all activists from the Jewish community for over half a century. Some of the names you may recognize, and they include Maury Gleischer, who I'm not going to explain each one of them, but Maury in particular was the political advisor to uh, Coleman uh, Young and uh, Marianne Mahaffey and most of the other progressive political figures in Detroit's history from the 1940s through the 1980s and into the 1990s. I would also mention Rabbi Ernst Conrad, a courageous man who escaped at the last minute from Nazi Germany, Al Fishman, uh, William Genser, who ran the Center for Peace and Conflict Studies, uh, studies at Wayne State University for many years and really created that organization and, and got it known to the public. Dr. Eugene Perrin, and one more, Ethel Schwartz, who was uh, very active in the labor movement. So there were real progressives from the Jewish community, and I, I tried to follow in their footsteps. I've been involved for a very, very long time with a number of organizations. And I go back in a way which is kind of interesting, because I was 14 years old. Not in the 1967 <laughs> rebellion, but in the 1943 riot. And I indeed call it a riot. It was at a time when the war plants were looking for all the people they could get to uh, create the production that was necessary, and where black workers and white workers came from the South in vast numbers, in the tens of thousands, to work in the war plants and where they rubbed against each other in ways which were quite terrible. I mean, we knew who the aggressors were. And on that day in 1943, which is roughly one generation before the uh, events we're talking about tonight, it was 24 years earlier. So another generation had grown up. I remember vividly taking a DSR bus, anybody remember DSR yes. buses, <laughs> to uh, the David Whitney building. I had a date with the dentist. And although I was not anywhere close to where the worst things were going on, there were some people on the streets throwing stones at cars, and somebody I knew driving downtown that same day it was a warm day, the windows were open in the car, it was struck and, and quite severely injured in his forehead. My father would not let me or my two sisters go out of the house after I got home from being downtown then. That was a riot caused by racial hatred without any question at all. 24 years later, entirely different matter. I grew up one block from where the events of 1967 started. I lived on the corner of Taylor, one block south of Claremont, and LaSalle, one block west of 12th Street. So I knew the area very well, though I had moved out further north in the city by that time, but not, not long before. And in 1967, I uh, 
against all advice from my friends and family, I took my car into the city the day on Monday. That started in the wee hours of Sunday morning, as you may know. And I went into the city on Monday and drove all over. I drove uh, out for miles along Grand River. I did see some looting, uh, white and black looters. I saw in the neighborhoods the houses that were burning and which really tore at my heart because these were homes that were not far from where I had lived when I was younger and they were going up in smoke and real people lived in those houses and would not live in them again. I know, as you may know, that among the 40-some deaths that took place over those two days, uh, overwhelmingly they were black citizens, there were a few whites, most of the killing, or at least half of it, came from weapons carried by white soldiers, whether they were uh, Michigan Guardsmen or federal soldiers or Detroit police. And the whole area was alarmed and listening to everything that could be heard. In the Jewish community, as I said, there was a whole variety of opinions. It started where I had first grown up, and it continued not far from where I had lived for the next nine years of my life, as I was turning 20 and 25. Uh, and there was great alarm in that area near Seven Mile in Livernois because the huge and busy and successful merchandise mart had been burned to the ground as well as it and neighboring furniture store, uh, all of which were patronized at that time by the Jewish community, scared the hell out of them. The opinions vary, as I said, and I'm proud of those who stepped forward and did what needed to be done, and uh, maybe we can talk about more of this later. It's, uh, the Jewish community also, as you know, was very closely allied, not the whole community, the progressive part of the community, and that was significant. It was very much allied with the civil rights movement and played a fairly important role in considering the size of the community. And I was very proud of that. I watched Rabbi Abraham Heschel walk arm in arm with Dr. Martin Luther King in Selma, Alabama in 1965, with Walter Ruther on one side, David Abernathy on the other side, it was thrilling. So we'll reflect more on what happened in 1967 and where that takes us from here. I've probably talked too long already.